So I think we're good. Um, are we okay to get started? Try, okay, all right. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Hello and welcome to the Museum of Latin American Arts, um, co-hosting of the Latino Comics Expo of 2021 and their 10th year anniversary. My name is Solimar Salas. I'm the Vice President for Museum Content and Programming here at MOLA. And on behalf of the rest of the team at MOLA, I would like to thank you for joining us today as we learn more about Javier Hernandez and El Muerto Lives, the life and times of the author. Before we begin, I would like to thank the sponsor that made this event possible and accessible. Please enjoy this trailer for the series Star Wars Vision, streaming now on Disney+. Long ago, a great warrior entrusted our ancestors with this. Its responsibility now lies with you. You've been guided by the Force since you were born. first time I've confronted such darkness. Something ancient and sinister. Let's make this our best show ever! I accept this responsibility. We are, all, we are also pleased to inform you that Muller receives additional support from the Robert Gumbiner Foundation, the City of Long Beach, the Arts Council of Long Beach, as well as the education programming at MOLA is supported by the Norris Foundation, the Miller Foundation, the Deutsche Stewart Youth Fund, and other generous individuals. We are pleased to welcome today's co-moderators, Ricardo Padilla and Bobby Hernandez, um, when we are excited to be joined by Javier Hernandez, the creator of El Muerto, a comic book first launched in 1998, Javier also served as the associate producer of the 2007 film adaptation starring Wilbur, Wilmer Vardes Rama. Javier is an arts educator as well as a lecturer on Latino comics. In 2007, he co-founded the Latino Comics Expo with Ra Ricardo Padilla. Welcome everyone. Remember to drop any questions into the Q&A window or the chat function at the bottom of your screen. We will be monitoring the time and answering questions during the program as well as after. Enjoy the show and welcome everyone. Thanks, Solimar. Welcome, Victor. Welcome, Javier. Nice. Thank you for joining us. Nice. And here we are. Nice. It's a great way to. It's a great way to kick off and kind of maybe say goodbye to our tenth anniversary of this Latino Comics Expo. Um, you, of course, co-founder, creative director, but really, uh, I just want to take this moment to say that definitely your work with El Muerto was a great inspiration for this expo. Um, I mean, it's, it's a great achievement in your career. Maybe just let's start off by just talking about El Muerto and the effect it's had on your life and how you first started down that road. Yeah, if I could really quick, I just want to thank uh, Mola for hosting us this year and previously. They, I think, yeah, we've definitely had the longest uh, partnership with Mola uh, over the years. So always great to be back with them. And I want to thank our sponsor, Lucasfilm. And I want to give a personal quick little quick thanks to George Lucas. But anyway, let's uh, move ahead. Um, you're asking about El Muerto, my comic book character. I started in 1998. Um, yeah, it's been something, I mean, it's part of the reason I'm retiring this year because I want to continue uh, or at least crank up production on new El Muerto graphic novels. But yeah, it started in 1998, self-published as a uh, black and white independent comic book. And um, like the Beatles say, it's been a long and winding road, ups and downs and twists and turns and always forward though so it's always been great just looking forward and seeing what you know what's next what's coming up um 
yeah, it was created originally because I wanted to do a character. I wanted to do my own comic book, but I wanted to do something based on a Mexican American folklore and mythology and culture. So I thought back then, uh, Day of the Dead and Aztec mythology, um, something you didn't see a lot of in comics, hardly in comics and hardly in pop culture. But um, yeah, so that's that's what inspired it. I wanted to make my own comic, but I wanted to make sure it reflected something of a Mexican, my Mexican background. So um, yeah, it's been a tremendous uh, 23 years working on that, um, overlapping with the 10 years we've been doing the expo. So yeah, it's definitely, they're definitely entwined and um, it's been fantastic. It's been great. No, just just to, to reiterate, I mean, that's kind of why we met uh, back in eight along time ago as a father of, of kids that were young at that time you know the search is always you know for you know material that reflects our culture our you know our people or and to come across as something as impactful and as well done as in muerto you know from an independent writer creator you know where you're just not using our culture as a fetish or a totem but to really digging in deep and you know being accurate and poetic i mean really just thank you Javier. it's one of the major comic creations of the last 25 years i mean it it holds up against anything and like i said just as a fan i just want to thank you for for muerto it's been amazing well yeah no i remember the alternative press expo in san jose when you come by with your yeah sophie and and andy your children at the time little, the little kids at the time and yeah, and I go, this guy's really into this. Yeah, you went, you went to my table. I think Rafael Navarro was next to me. And you were definitely on the hunt for uh, Latino-centered comics that you wanted to pass on to your kids. Like, because you, like me and a lot of us, you grew up loving, you know, Spider-Man, X-Men, Batman, you know, that we, we still all love that stuff. But there was definitely something in me, you know, maybe the, my teens and my college years, like, there was no Latino characters, really. There wasn't, you know, why not? Like, my whole life is, you know, in my society it's you know nothing but latino mexican americans yet when i turn on open up a comic or turn on a tv show they disappear so um you know we took a lot i took we a lot of us took inspiration from one of your your guests yesterday uh beto hernandez and his brother jaime they were for years a couple of decades they were flying that flag you know doing latino uh centered uh characters and stories so yeah i'm glad to be part of whatever we were doing in the 90s and oh boy today i can't even we can't even keep track of how many Latino creators are always coming up, popping up, showing up everywhere. It's, and that's good. You don't want you don't want to be able to count like all the Latino creators on one hand or two hands. Like, OK, there's eight of us. No, you want to look at like, oh, there's, you know, a couple of hundred, whatever. So. Well, well that's been the fun part about the expo. Uh, somebody reminded me earlier today that I think maybe at our first expo we had with eight or nine artists eight or nine tables. And I think one of the last times we were at MOLA before all this COVID, we have almost 75, 80 artists. Yeah, no more because we had about 80 tables and some of the tables had two artists. So yeah, you know, probably about a hundred. Yeah, that was our last physical expo back in 2017 at, at uh, in Long Beach at, at MOLA. And then the last time I believe that we've all seen each other physically was uh, at, the, um, at the animation festival prior to this whole shutdown in um, January, 2020. So it's glad, I'm, I'm, we talk all the time, but I'm really happy to see you here today and uh, here alongside uh, Rico. We, um, we've titled, we rightfully titled the, tonight's panel, uh, El Muerto Lives, the Life and, the, the life and Times of uh, Javier, right? Javier Hernandez. Um, what, have you, what have you been up to with El Muerto? These, uh, you know, during this this whole time that you're prepping uh, post post Latino Expo, uh, Latino Comics Expo. Yeah, um, well, it's funny. Gilbert mentioned yesterday. You know, I think Rico asked him about, you know, hey, what was like life in the pandemic? But yeah, you know, as artists, we're actually always at home anyway, drawing. Only difference was we don't go out to the movies as often, or you know, you know, restaurants, whatever. But we're yeah, I've been just sitting there drawing, you know. In between everything else, so I've been working on my next graphic novel, the second El Muerto graphic novel, Casa del Diablo, which I think last year I did a Kickstarter for a preview comic, like the first 26 pages of it. So thanks to everybody who supported that. So 
but now I'm continuing the rest of the thing. And then of course I'm going to put it all out in, you know, one, one book, one graphic novel, book number two, book number two of 10 is I think the plan. Um, so yeah, basically just doing that. Um, I spent a lot of time just catching up on movies, you know, the last two years, I discovered this thing called Tubi. Like, Ooh, look all the free B and the great B movies, just cool, trashy stuff that Netflix or Amazon maybe is too highbrow to carry. Um, so just been enjoying the time. Um, I've been teaching online. I know it's like, if I look at another screen, <laughs> but yeah, I've been teaching like so many other people the last year and a half online. Um, I teach comic book workshops. So everybody knows. And I've, I worked with a group called Artworks LA here in Los Angeles. And I'm currently teaching a class uh, down uh, there in Escondido down by San Diego area. Um, every Friday I teach, I'm teaching these fifth grade classes. Um, they're working on a comic on human rights. They each had to pick one of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And um, so that's a really rewarding project. And um, I, I do miss, I mean, like everything else, I miss the expo, the physical expo, I miss teaching in the class. Um, you get used to it. You get like comfortable doing the Zoom stuff, which you have to get good at it because you do so much of it. But it's like, yeah, you want to be there. You want to interact with people, and look at their artwork or whatever, sell books, whatever. So, um, but yeah, it's great to be here talking to you guys, uh, talking with our audience. I did see some of the comments earlier. I'm sure we'll get some questions at the end from Arturo. Um, but yeah. But, 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 speaking of, but speaking of movies, I, I can't let you go without talking about... Um, one of my favorite movies. I mean, because the honest thing is that you've lived out the dream of many comic book creators, you know, creative people, in terms of having your character turned into an actual Hollywood movie, you know, with Wilmer Valderrama, Michael Parks. I mean, I consider it one of the classic cult films of the last, you know, 10, 15 years, uh, the movie adaptation of your comic, El Muerto. Um, you, you gotta let us know just how that felt, having that being made into a movie uh, and the experiences around that, because I mean, that's every comic book creator's dream to have their, their work turned into a movie. And, and I felt all in all, it, they did a pretty amazing job. Well, it was a fantastic experience because it was a small independent film. So because I live here in the LA area, I was able to actually meet all the time with the uh, producer, Larry Ratner and the writer director, Brian Cox and actually go to the set every day. Like, you know, I was there from crack of dawn till, oh man, midnight or sometimes <laughs> three in the morning. Um, but it was- you, a, you got producer credit, right? Associate producer on the film, yes, sir. Um, had a cameo in it. When I got one of the early drafts of the scripts from Brian, he wrote the screenplay. I go, hey, can I do a cameo? He's like, yeah, what do you want to do? I want to do this guy here. He's like, yeah, but he's wearing a mask. But yeah, but he takes a, <laughs> that's, a re, that's a reveal, it's a skull mask, so. Um, so yeah, it was a great experience. Um, you know, the thing about the dream, like the everybody, dream, yeah, I'm sure I always thought of that, but I made the comic to make the comic. Like when I, did, when I you know, I slaved away on that first El Muerto issue throughout the late nineties, but got published in 98. I just love comic books. I love the storytelling aspect of it. I love the, uh, the reading and writing part of it. I love the writing and drawing part of it. Um, I was just happy to make like, hey, I got off my butt, made my own comic. And then my plan was to just keep making them, which I, which I have been. But yeah, the movie came about because I did an interview on, um, with NPR at San Diego Comic-Con, probably 2001. No, it was 2001. Um, uh, with a certain, I forgot the reporter's name, but he came to my table, he interviewed me, and then he left. And I go, okay, well, I felt, okay, well, at least I did my part. I did an interview, it's out there. I wasn't expecting anything to come out of it. You know, maybe some sales, but. Then I got contacted by uh, Brian Cox, our future director. Uh, his assistant goes, hey, we saw you heard your interview. We'd like to get a copy of your comic. So they sent me some, what was it? Like a seven or $9 check. Cause I only had two books at the time. You know, I didn't overprice, I, you know, I guess I should know they're 50 bucks. No, I just sent them, you know, I charged them with the book cost and the postage and uh, they got the book. Um, it's really funny. The reporter who interviewed me during the summer at Comic-Con this was the year 9-11 happened. Mm. And then so I remember one time I was working, I was at uh, on my lunch break and I'm listening to NPR, you know, the covering the disaster there in New York. And, and then I heard that reporter, I re recognized his name and he was covering, you know, he was at the site, the World Trade Center talking about the horrible stuff. And after the interview, I just thought it was so like, wow, so interesting of the life of a reporter, like 
yeah, you're going to interview some lightweight, fluffy little comic book uh, story, and then next thing you're reporting on the horrible attack of the century. But um, uh, but yeah, so then eventually back here in LA, I got to meet uh, Larry and Brian. There's a wonderful, I always tell about the wonderful courtship, the courtship mm-hmm. of the studio or the producers and then you. So like they want you. So, hey, let's go to dinner. So, you know, I'm, I'm from a smaller town here next in near Los Angeles, Whittier. But yeah, I'd go meet them and, you know, I'd go to steakhouses. I go to places where they're like $15 hamburgers, like, no, I $3 burgers back here in Whittier. So yeah, that, that, that was beautiful, the courtship and the friendship that develops and especially the rapport I made with the Brian, yeah. uh, the writer, director. So um, yeah, the thing, yeah, yeah. I, the, the thing I consider myself so fortunate is that, you know, being a fan of Ben Muerto, reading all the comics, and then he, having the, the, the ability or the pleasure to see it on the big screen, because I, I think I've been fortunate to see Ben Muerto on the big screen like three times. And, you know, to see the reaction of people in the theater to your characters, to your storyline, you know, to see the beauty and the effect that that storyline has on people. Um, it just reminds me what an amazing creation and, and, you know, what an accomplishment you did, you know. A lot of people get, you know, the reaction from reading it, but, you know, when you're in the theater and you see how people react to, you know, ideas that are yours, character ideas that are that are your creation. I think, you know, I've been really fortunate to see how people love that character and, and, and love your storyline. So I, I just yeah, want to thank you again for it, Muerto. Yeah, thanks. Well, we had the world premiere at the San Diego Latino Film Festival and Ricardo, I swear, he drove down because it was at night, the premiere by eight o'clock. So you left San Francisco that morning or whatever. And then you drove in, you came to the screening, you went with us downtown to the after party. Then I think you drove home. That is <laughs> that's crazy, man. That is crazy. beautiful. And then you hosted, a, I think you helped us hook up a screening in San Francisco at the uh, another hole in the head, I think it was called. Yeah, in the mission. In the mission. So, yeah, thank, thanks for that. And it's great. Yeah, it is great seeing. Yeah, because when someone reads your comic, they read it on their own, right? You're not there. You're not hovering over them as they read it. But a movie, yeah, that's a community experience. So, yeah, I get to sit there. And sometimes I look over and I see people looking at the screen or laughing at the at the right joke or something. Or, you know, every time I had my cameo, you could always hear the audience would laugh. Like the people who know you, you know, like, oh, there's hobby, whatever. So, <laughs> Um, that, that yeah, it, it is fun. The movie, the whole movie experience. Um, yeah, because uh, glad we're getting back to just that. As a, just as a creator, I mean, I think you've been one of those that have been able to to mix, you know, not just the culture, you know, and the and you know the language and everything, but you know, a lot of humanity, a lot of you know, real deep personal things that you're able to weave into your comics. You know, different philosophical things that you want to share, and you know, I think that's one of the great things about your artwork and you know, along with your other characters that you're able to convey in your work, so. Well, my, my premise is always, whether it's something like El Muerto, which is based on Mexican culture or other characters, maybe they're not. I want to first tell a fun story. You know, I want, I got to have fun doing it. I want to make sure it's fun and interesting, and exciting. Um, I don't want to telegraph like, oh, this is a cultural lesson I'm trying to teach people. That, that's not my work. Um, it's wrapped up in the characters. But for me, my job, even though I started this, like I wanted to make sure I, I highlighted Mexican culture. I got to tell a fun, exciting story, you know, just the way, like when I sit down and watch like a Tim Burton movie or a John Carpenter film or something like tell me a really great story with really cool, interesting characters or in comics with really cool visuals. So um, th- that, that for me has always been like the core of it. I mean, the Mexican American Latino cultural stuff is obviously very important. I mean, El Muerto, the, you know, based on Day of the Dead and such. But those are the ingredients that go in it. But at the end of the day, I got to deliver, I just got to be a really, I hope, entertaining, fun uh, storyteller, so. If I may right here. So uh, you, on top of El Muerto, you have uh, interpreted some amazing Aztec Mayan characters and you brought them, uh, you brought them you created a new, not not created, but you designed them in your own style. And so I'm gonna go ahead and show the screen uh, this awesome image of Tezcatepotla. Tell us in an, in an like now in an era where uh, 
uh, drawing and bringing forth, you know, Aztec and Mayan mythology, Mesoamerican mythology, going back to when you started, uh, tell us about the process of interpreting these Mesoamerican characters and these uh, Aztec gods that, that yeah, stand out. No. Yeah, thanks. Well, let me say really quick, I, I, I can't think of all the names offhand, but let me just congratulate all the artists out there, the young artists or whatever, older artists, creators, so many there's so many now there's so many people doing great work with aztec mind mythology and I, I can tell they have so much love for the uh the, the, the culture and the mythology that they really research it and they're so passionate about it. i think that's so fantastic so my hat's off to them when i did mine back in 98 so you know mid 90s starting to research it i always approached it from the jack kirby approach jack kirby one of the great artists of comics Marvel comics throughout the 60s and beyond. Um, you know, he, he, he did Thor. And when you read the Thor comic back then, it's like, well, it's not really based. It's, I mean, this doesn't look like a Norwegian Thor uh, creation, right? Because he added to it. That was always my intention with, um, yeah, my gods there is showing, Descartes Lepoca, Mikla Tekutli, God of Death. I always knew I was going to do some research. It was more surface research, really. Like, let me just get their basic points down. If, if, if you could describe a god as just having basic points, but and then I would look at the art that was already done on those gods, and I would look and I would take I would and I and I gave myself I'm gonna pick and choose what I want. Obviously, the god of death is gonna be a skull head guy, but then I would just look through different books at the library at the time when the library was more of a thing. Now it's all online research, but and I would find different Aztec uh, patterns and symbols. So. Maybe I'm not using them right. Like someone I'm sure could look at them. Hey, that means this. But I just went with the visual. And then that's how I, that's how I designed those two uh, characters. And, and I still do that today. Um, so again, I take, it, take the original art and creations and the religion as an influence. And then I have the license to um, interpret it, you know, reinterpret it and, and hopefully make an interesting, exciting visual. So it's Javier's Descat Le Poca. It's Javier's Miklante Kutli. Excellent. Uh, and then your and then the like your your manga style, like you know the like there's different versions or variations of um, El Muerto, especially now. Like there's um, Loki has uh, created like this whole thing of variants, right? Uh, so uh, is there a possibility of your manga Muerto reading your uh, main El Muerto in the future, uh, with, with, throughout your various books? The madness of the Muerto. The Muerto verse to take a, a line from the uh, upcoming Spider-Man film next year, or Doctor Strange, I forgot which one. Um, yeah, the, the manga Muerto was basically, I was, you know, I grew up, Rico will know this, uh, as an older person, a fan of the old 1960s Gigantor, uh, ja the early Japanese anime that we got over here in the US, um, little boy with a giant robot, and then Gigantor, and, and a giant robot and such. Um, so I wanted to do my, I wanted to do that, just like the idea of a, some kid controlling this monstrous weapon of mass destruction basically but for good but instead of creating a new character i go well let me just take out muerto and let me just transfer him onto that um uh, idea so that's why we have a manga muerto um but yeah they could definitely meet i guess yeah i mean i could do a story if i if i if i think of something worthwhile where they meet i never thought of it actually because i thought they were just separate concepts but you know yeah you're right just throw the multiverse logo on the book like okay now you can combine your different versions of character, your characters from different uh, genres you created. <laughs> well, and then I, go ahead, go ahead, Rico. I'll go for it, Bobby. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna switch uh, subjects a little bit because I have you, I have you both here, and so I know we're, we're celebrating Javier, we're celebrating El Muerto, but we're also celebrating the tenth anniversary of the Latino yep. Comics Expo. And I mean, since you guys are both here, can you guys elaborate on just? Some, some of your uh, most uh, favorite memories of, you know, the Latino Comics Expo throughout these last 10 years. Just a few highlights uh, for the both of you uh, Rico? That, that you guys shared, you know? Give us well, a highlight, Rico. Let me, hard, first. Many. let me do it first, just because um, if you would have known me and Javi back in the day, I mean, you realize, you know, how many miracles, how many, <laughs> you know, support people have come in in the nick of time to help us. I mean, Back when we started the Cartoon Art Museum in San Francisco, uh, Javi knows my mom was the one making burritos yeah. in the artist's green room. 
like that's an amazing memory. We, we were able to get Spain Rodriguez to mm -hmm. come and support us. It was his last show. And just my memories watching him in the green room eating my mom's burritos. Yeah. Smiling. And I was like, you know what? If we've got Spain Rodriguez on our side, you know, we we have a chance, you know. But uh, I mean, there's so many memories, but I think the best memories are just meeting all the artists. You know, we met Bobby from Chicago. We've met, you know, the Hernandez brothers, but just all the other independent local artists who have come to us and said, you know, thanks for doing the expo. Now I'm inspired to do a comic. Because a lot of people come to the show just as fans, and then the next show they're like, hey, I got a comic now, or, mm -hmm. or I want a table now. And it's it's just been great. That's For me, that's been the most part, because I love Latinos. I love Latino comics. And I want to see more content. And uh, like you said, it's grown. You know, to a, we have an animation fest now. We have, you know, it gets bigger and better every year. So, I mean, there's so many memories, but I guess just the people part of it has been the fun. It's just hanging out with you guys and just meeting all the artists and seeing all the amazing work. Uh, your, one of your previous panels, Crystal Gonzalez. She, yeah, she was. I think we met her at the first one. You know, we had never met her before, and she heard about our thing and she got a table. And she's been a wonderful friend for all of us for years. And she actually runs our animation festival. So she's a, she turned out to be, yeah, a bigger part of the expo than when she, she first started. So, and there's so many stories like that. Um, one of my favorite memories, I mean, again, yeah, how do you pick one is, um, it, it's always cool. I hope you get back to that next year. Like we have a live show and then it's like any convention, but this happens to be ours where, you know, the tables are all empty. And then, you know, I show up there with my boxes, I'm unloading, and then I see another artist show up. And just just seeing the artists come in the door with their dollies and their trucks and setting up their stuff. And then, like, within an hour, it's like, whoa, it's, you got a, fill, fold up, a filled up expo now, bringing the audience. Um, that's always great, because it's like, we always wanted to create a space, a weekend for these great writers and artists and designers and creators to have a place to meet like the audience that they, um, I mean, I should, you know, we always tell the artists, yeah, go to every show you can. Don't just wait for us every year. But when they, when the time comes every year, it's like, okay, now here's the weekend for all the Latino creators and all the Latino audiences or any, any audience, really anyone's welcome here, but this is where you're going to get Latino centered content this weekend or Latino creator content. So that's always fun. Um, one of, the, one, of the cool, one of the cool things that we always get is, I, I swear, like, it never fails. Like, at least two or three artists after Expo will always come up to me and say, you know what? Thanks for having this Expo. This was the best sales I've gotten all year. Uh, yeah. This was the most I've sold all year because I didn't have to explain what a calaca was or I didn't have to explain yeah. what a tamale was. People just were hungry for this. And that always makes me happy, too, when people find an audience you know, for their work. And I think that's been a major thing that the Expo's been able to do. Is, uh, here's your market, target market, go for it, you know? And, and the audience, the patrons, they walk in, they tell us like, wow, we didn't know there was so many Latino creators. I go, yeah, exactly. That's why they're all under one, uh, what I call it, one shop, uh, one room shopping experience, whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean, the memories, I think, I think me and Ricardo agree, just the people, like the artists and then the patrons, the audience. Um, and then, you know, we should really quick, uh, thank all our uh, venue partners over the years, beginning with uh, the Cartoon Art Museum. They were, you know, because there was never a Latino comic expo before. So when Ricardo approached them, they were very happy to host us. So thank you, uh, Summer Lee, Ron, uh, Andrew, and all your wonderful staff there over the years. They hosted us the first three years. Um, Martin Luther King Jr. Library at San Jose State. Yep, Catherine Black Marveas, thank you. She was open to take us in, and then of course uh, I got we got to we got to give a thanks to um, Gabriela Martinez who worked at the Mola for so many years and was instrumental. And in, again, I remember meeting her the first time. She said, "Yeah, this sounds great. Let me let's talk about it. Let's get it moving." So she was with us, I think, for four shows there. Um, uh, we traveled across the country to uh, Brownsville Museum of Fine Art. They were open. That was a, that was neat going out of state for a show. Um, and then, of course, like I said, Mola has been with us for so many shows and now virtually our first show last year because the pandemic was virtual and it was with Mola. So it made it easier because we'd already worked with them. We all just had to learn how to do this whole virtual thing. But 
here we are doing our second one, which is great. But man, I just hope for the sake of the country and everybody, let's get everybody back out on the road. So everybody do your job at home. You know what that means? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we have a question from Hector. Um, Hector Rodriguez. He's asking a question. He's saying, how do, how do you see the, uh, the Latino Comics Expo uh, 10 years from now? Latino Comics Expo 2031. So uh, it's, go ahead. Um. Well, you know what? I'm going to tell Hector and anybody else, that's not for me to answer because I'm retiring in uh, 27 minutes. I will no longer be um, <laughs> running the expo. I'm going to, you know, have a nice retirement. These two gentlemen here on the screen, Ricardo Padilla, the co-founder, executive director, and the young man here, who was for a couple of years our operations manager is now going to be taking a co-organizer role so you guys tell us what is the expo look like in one year two years ten years uh, i'll let rico answer uh because uh yeah he's he's well, been first here of all, i want to quote godfather three they pull me back in you will no. be pulled you will be pulled back in harvey so don't oh no 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 you can oh, really wrestle, quick. but you can't hide. You can really, no, really quick, let me tell everybody, all the wrestling fans out there, so I'm going to retire, but this isn't like a Ric Flair or a wrestler retire. <laughs> where they retire, they have a big party, everyone's crying, it's beautiful, and then a year later, the guy wants back in, or two years later, he, they, break I, a chair. they break a chair over you? Yep, and then he gets back. No, no, I'm retiring because I need to focus on... Um, on working on my books because every year the expo comes up as much as we love it and i do it's a good three or four months of a lot of work to put on a really good show especially a live show these uh, virtual ones have been a lot easier to run actually but the live shows take a lot of work and that takes off time from my schedule so yeah. this is one reason i told that's the main reason i told ricardo and bobby months ago yeah. hey guys uh, i hate to say this but i'm going to retire expo number 10 is a good one we did 10 years we did Ooh. some historic uh groundbreaking stuff so i want to get i want to leave off on a 10-year mark I, I it's unfortunate that it's not a live show because honestly it'd be nice we can all go out right now down the street to uh roscoe's chicken waffles or wherever we'd be at and have a party like i do honestly i'll be honest i do miss the fact that it's not a, a live show but that's that's pandemic related it's it's not it's not by choice yeah. um and the other reason i'm glad we're doing this panel because i want anyone out there to think oh why is he leaving is there a problem no i love these two guys I, you know, I hate to leave them, but they're going to handle it. And we're still friends. Um, so there's no, there's no hidden drama behind my leaving. It's, I'm very open about it. I told them, I'm telling the audience, it's time to retire and just focus on my comics. It's particularly on Martha, but other stuff I want to do. Yeah. So um, hopefully I don't have to answer the question at that point, but. <laughs> as, as a fan, I can't argue with that because I'm always harassing Harvey for more material and went to material i'm the one who always bought him like when's the next one coming out when's the next one coming out so i can't argue with his desire to to get more work done and like I, once again i just want to thank him you know for being one of the major impetus of us starting this if it wasn't for muerto and these first 10 years have been amazing i think every year we get a little bit better a little bit bigger a little bit more professional bobby's been a major factor in, in in our efficiency and stuff like that. So my dream for the next 10 years is that we keep it going, you know, we keep it improving. We want more input, you know, we want more, you know, Latinas, we want more, you know, LGBTQ, we want more afro Latin. We want everybody to have a voice in our expo and keep making it bigger and better. You know, like we expand a little bit to an animation fest, to, you know, the dream would be, you know, to be a resource for for artists and, and people that want to get their work, you know, out there and seen and and also to have artists like Hobby, you know, their work discussed, you know. That's what I notice about other conventions is they, they'll, they'll discuss, you know, their writers, they'll talk about their meanings. And sometimes people need to know that, you know, we're doing stuff that's just as deep as any other convention, that we have artists just as important as anybody else. So you know, my dream for the expo is that we just keep it going, you know, let's keep it going. Uh, one other shout out I wanted to give because, you know, doing it for 10 years, we have our ups and our downs. Uh, sometimes, you know, we've been wanting to throw in the towel, but, you know, one of our uh, official guardian angels over the last 10 years has been uh, one of the Hernandez brothers, Mario Hernandez, did a lot of mentoring here in San Francisco. 
And in my you know, low points, I would tell them, I was like, man, this expo is killing us. It's so much work. And you know, sometimes we don't see the value in it. And he's like, Ricardo, don't. I went to the first 10 years of San Diego Comic-Con. It was poorly attended. We were in a VW hall. Our crumb was sitting there. Nobody was paying attention to him. He was depressing everybody. You guys doing a lot better than San Diego Comic Con in its first 10 years. And we're like, whoa. So, you know, people like that, you know, the fans have kept us going. So, I mean, that's my only hope is that me and Bobby, with the support of the fan base and everybody else, that we can keep it going, you know, for the community and, you know, being a showcase for everybody. The other thing I want to tell anybody right now listening or fans, whatever, like, hey, don't worry. I, you'll see me every year at the convention. I'll have a table. I, you know, I always had a table there. So I'm always going to be a vendor. I'm always going to have a table. I told the guys, hey, you know, let's uh, figure out a golden parachute. But yeah, I'd like to also <laughs> host, uh, you know, I'll be willing to host a panel or two every year. But I will have a table there every year. Just like you, just like the other vendors, I'll be there as a vendor. And, you know, God, Ricardo brought up the Godfather. I will be like uh, Don Corleone in the first film where he retired and Michael took over, but Michael would still go talk to him for <laughs> advice. So I will share advice. Of well, Michael's you want to dip your beak, wet your beak. Wet your beak, yeah. I will there give him advice. Um, tell him to watch out for the Tatalias and, you know, the... Uh, <laughs> the but yeah, so, the Barzinis. The Barzinis. So I'm not disappearing, uh, folks and fans and friends. Um, I'm just stepping out of the uh, co-director chair and Bobby there is uh, stepping into it, thankfully. I'm really glad to be able to, I don't know, have a little hand in picking a successor as well instead of being, you don't want to be thrown out of a group. You don't want to be voted out. You want to retire on your own. And if you have a way to put somebody in there who you have complete confidence in, then I feel very lucky. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I, I do want to say it is bittersweet for me because you and I, I mean, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and quote Dominic Toretto's character from uh, Fast and Furious. We're not friends, we're family, and so uh, it's been yeah, it's bitter, it's bittersweet the because our family. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, um, but it's it's bittersweet because yeah, it's like you're you're a mentor, you're a friend, and it's just like yeah, not having you there, uh, but it allows me to grow. So I, I appreciate the opportunity for, for, from from you and and from Rico. And uh, I want to say, like, you, you've been told online, someone made a comment that, you know, uh, your participation, your guys' creation of the Latino Comics Expo has changed lives. And I, I know for a fact, I know for a fact that um, the Expo has changed my life. So I appreciate uh, you guys creating this and allowing this. And so in the next 10 years, we need to, yeah, we need to continue. We need to grow. And there's children and little ones out there that want to that, that want to experience. They want they want to be seen, right? They want to be seen. They want to get the opportunity to to create and be showcased. And that's that's what we that's what you guys have uh, created a platform to do so. And so I'm definitely excited to to serve. For sure. it, it's great. It's great seeing um, the uh, young little Latina girls. They go up to the Latina creators at our tables. And they're just like, they seem amazed that there's like, wow, there's a girl, another girl making comics, a woman. So that's great. And that's one of the things me and Ricardo alluded to, like, just inspire people to, you know, uh, pick up their own pencil if they can, if they have any creative talent that they want to express to make your own comic. Um, Bobby, I remember that one time you wrote me the first time and I forgot what year, but you're like, yeah, you know, I heard about the expo and it sounds great. I can't believe there's a Latino expo. Me and my brother would like to come out and help you guys. You know, we're in Chicago and then we'd come out on our own. And I remember telling Ricardo, I called him up. I go, you're not going to believe this. There's these two guys. They want to come out and help us. I told them we can't fly them out. We don't have money for a hotel. They want to come out and help. And I remember Ricardo, they came and helped at the San Jose show at the Martin Luther King Jr. Museum. And I remember they just stepped, we didn't, me and Ricardo didn't know what to do with them because we don't want to boss them around. Like, well, we appreciate the help. <laughs> and then the artists were showing up in their cars with their boxes. And Bobby and his brother Danny, they just they went down there and started loading, helping the people load up inside. And then later on, Bobby's coming with a big box of coffee. You know, he bought coffee for everybody. And like, wow. Yeah. So um, his something he believed of, in. His mastery of logistics was uh, apparent right off the bat. And, and yeah. hospitality. <laughs> yeah. But he believed in it. So um, appreciate that's, that, Bobby. That's, that's been the beautiful thing is, uh, yeah. Uh, try not to get too emotional, but 
No, it's true. I mean, because like Javi said, we've done shows in Brownsville, Texas. Uh, we were in the Farm Worker Committee, Modesto, California. And like he said, just to look on the faces of little kids and, you know, people have never seen Latino comics before. It, you know, it makes you know that we're on the right path, you know, no matter what the difficulties and the obstacles. I mean, we're, we're on the right path and, and including people. That's what we've been all about is just including people into the narrative telling people that you can do it as well. And I mean, that's been the fun part of the whole thing. Yeah, but Destro Junior College, you, yeah, you, you, you mentioned, yeah, that Teresa Rojas. Teresa Rojas, gracias. Yeah, awesome event. And I think, um, uh, actually that, that was our, that was our, that was the last, that was 2000, yeah, 2018. That was awesome. Cause we got to do the road trip. So that was the road trip year. Yeah, um, from Southern California to, to Northern California. Was that was that our last live show? Uh, I mean, Expo, not the animation, but the animation the, was the last live thing we did. But yeah, the last Expo was Modesto. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's this dang pandemic, man. Yeah, you're part, everybody, please. Yeah. yeah. So, so, as a fan, can I ask another question? Not as an Expo person. I okay. Need know, I need to know. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. Weapon Tex Max? And Tex Max. Is he coming back? Yes, I need to know. Well, those three or four months I'm getting back every year by leaving the expo, I can hopefully squeeze out a little Weapon Tex Max story for Rico. We are, I still we, are want you, we are a fan base over here. I still want you to play him in the film if there's ever a film. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. At least a stunt double, yeah. It's not <laughs> but let's talk about that character because I mean I don't want to get all Jack Kirby on you but I mean that's one thing we have to admit about Javi and admire about him is just his ability to create new characters you know and Wife is legendary but you know if we go to Coma, Maniac Priest, you know Dead Dinosaurio but Weapon Tex Max it really kind of just hit me somewhere I don't know it's that ability to you know, with your fiction, with your imagination, really touch people. And Weapon Tex Max, it, it, it took me back to like, you know, Silver Surfer days, a character that really spoke to me. Maybe just as a fan, give me more back, you know, story information on how you came up with uh, Weapon Tex Max, por favor. Well, actually, I'm glad you brought him up because, yeah, we talk about El Muerto, El Muerto, but that wasn't the first character I published. It was actually mm -hmm. Weapon Tex Max uh -huh. in 97. Because I was working on El Muerto, it took me like two or three years to just get that one issue done, which is very common. <laughs> um, but my friend Rafael Navarro had met, uh, he was working in animation, and he had met these other guys, and they were putting together this anthology comic called The Best Title Ever. It was called Hot Mexican Love Comics. I mean, who's not jealous they didn't come up with that name? That's a great name. And Ralph goes, hey, uh, you want to contribute a story? They're looking for three or four page stories. And I wanted to do it for sure, right? Let me get something published before I finish my book. <clears throat> but I didn't want to do a Muerto story because like, well, let me do his full story first. <clears throat> so I just, <clears throat> excuse me, wow. I just came up with this character, I don't know how. Uh, well, Weapon X, you know, Wolverine was at one point called Weapon X in his history, in his story history. So I just thought Weapon X and I was like, it was so easy, like Weapon Tex-Mex. Again, I got to do a Latino, a Mexican-centered character. And, uh, I think you mentioned Jack Kirby, but yeah, I was thinking of Jack Kirby's old, like the thing, you know, the big hulking guy or the Hulk or the beast. Just oh, these with big the heart of gold, with the heart of gold. With the heart of gold, yes. Yeah. Um, so I just thought this big bulky guy, well, weapon Tex Max. Okay, he's probably going to be a bull. So he's got these steel bull horns and a Zorro <laughs> mask, and he's like big and burly and with skinny legs, bull legs, and cowboy boots. I know, speaking to Ricardo here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I did a humorous, quick little three-page story, I think. Um, knocked that out, got that published. Like, that was my first published work. If you could find, that's a hard book to find, Hot Mexican Love Comics. It might have been issue two, maybe. But I, I only have one copy myself, so don't think of getting that one. Um, it's in the Padilla family collection, yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Rico's got a very nice archive of, uh, but not just my books, but like a lot of the early 90s Latino, and what they call it, El Movimiento. A lot of those early <laughs> uh, Latino comics and art. Him and his wife have a nice collection of art. Um, 
sculpture, paintings. So yeah, Ricardo was the perfect partner, um, not because just I knew him, but when we started the expo, because the way we divide the work, just so people know, give them some insight. So I'm the creative director. I like to just, let me just come up with all the panels and uh, the list of artists and everything and, and work with. We got to give a shout out to Jose Cabrera, mm. who created our logo that Ricardo's wearing. Jose Cabrera created the Latino Comics Expo logo. He's a good old friend, old friend. He's a graphic designer, cartoonist. He came up with that logo. We, we, he's been, we've been using it ever since. And he always works on the posters for the design or he even illustrated a few of them. Um, where was I going with this? Um, what was Department that? Of responsibilities. Yeah, but before that, oh my gosh, I don't remember now. Uh, the, 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 the inner workings of the expo. You're the creative director. Uh, Jose Cabrera oh, yeah. does it yeah, the yeah. low posters. So Ricardo, Ricardo's uh, strengths and skills, and I'm glad he, because I wouldn't do this. He's our executive director. He was the first one. He's the one who contacted the uh, Cartoon Art Museum. I'm not a big fan of getting on phones and calling people and asking for things. And even though all the partners have been great, Ricardo has a lot of skill with that. He'll, Ricardo will call a mayor. He'll call a city council for a plot donation. He'll call the biggest uh, corporations in America or Hollywood <laughs> for donations. So yeah, you need, you need that skill. That's not a skill I have and I want. So we're, me and him have always been a good partnership where he does all that part. Uh, that's that he's got great talent for that. Um, just let me work with the artist, which is I love my artist, but man, it's like herding cats. Can you do that application? It's only been three months, but so anyway, that, that's just I wanted to share that. How that next cat, yeah, 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 very artistic cats, but um, so yeah, Bobby's got to move into my position somehow. And you guys, you guys will figure all that again. I'll behind the scenes, we'll talk about all that stuff. We don't want to bore the audience with that stuff. Um, but, um, but yeah, I just wanted to just give a tip of the hat to Ricardo for everything he's done. Um, and yeah, your mom bringing those burritos that one year, first couple of years, that was, people loved it. People kept going back for more and more. And, you know, God bless her. She's like, pobrecitos, son artistas. Uh, <laughs> con sus libritos y sus monitos. Tienen hambre. I was like, no, that's just Jaime Crespo. <laughs> <laughs> hi, man. Hi. Uh, shout you, out to Amy Crespo, man. I think he, went, he ate the most burritos that day, I think. Damn. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but you, like, like, these last few years, again, as, as we're celebrating you tonight, uh, you've had a lot of uh, experiences. I mean, a lot of, uh, not, not, not many independent comic book creators share your experience of, you know, of self, self-publishing, feature film, uh, co-director of the Latino Comics Expo, uh, you know, like zine maker of uh, Steve Ditko, and you know, like you, you, like one of your, one of your uh, big uh, heroes. You've got, you've gotten, you know, uh, involved and and kind of like uh, done a, a, a perfect homage uh, to him. Tell us about uh, educator you, lecturer. Yeah, t- tell us, tell us how you do it all. What, like, I mean, it. it you gotta love it. I think Gilbert said this yesterday. You gotta love what you're doing. I mean, you just really have to. Like, I worked a lot of day jobs and I hated it. Or you know, they're okay, but you start really. The owners are sometimes jerks and idiots. I'm like, why am I working for these people? Um. So yeah, you work on your own. You love what you're doing. You love all the hard work. <clears throat> you love the difficult work, and when it's not work, even when it's not working, you have to. You don't really love it, maybe, but you have to. Just got Guantanamo. You got to put up with it, and then it, it figure it out. Then it works, and then you get it working again. Um, it's just out of love, Bobby. Out of love of telling my own stories, my way, my way or the highway. Um, <laughs> it's a stubbornness for me. I think it's a big. A lot of it's being stubborn. Um, you got to work with people. Obviously, working with the expo put me in a different position. Even working on the movie, yeah, it's a whole crew. You're just one voice in a whole crew. Or in the expo, you're one of maybe two voices running it. But when you do your comic, me, you know, cartoonist, write and draw, it's just me. I remember working on the movie, right? Uh, the Muerto movie back in 2005 for like two months. Every day, 12-hour days, working with the crew. You know, I mean, they made the film. I just got to sit there and watch it. But it's like they're making your character. I remember the, after the last day, and I came home, and I think I rested the whole day for that one day. Then the next night, 
I remember like, okay, I sat back at the table. I got a big fresh sheet of white paper. I got my pencil, like, okay, now it's just me again. Like I love working on the film and I'm glad when it came out, it was great. But man, there's something about, for me, working by myself on my own, you know, I'll, and I'll stand by the work, you know, you take it, you know, people didn't like it or this was, this was stupid or you drew it wrong. Okay, but I did it though, at least, you know what I mean? I, you know, I'll take the good and the bad, but it was me. It's like John Carpenter says, like, watch my movie, love it or hate it. It's my movie still. So my comic, it's my, my comic is my signature on the world is what I, I guess when I, when I'm gone, that's, the, that's the signature I left. No. Steve Dicker not- said, either leave a, you either leave a, what do you say? A stain or, um, oh God, I forgot to say, I forgot to quote, but the opposite of a stain, right? You, like a mark or a stain. What are you going to leave on the world, right? I'd rather leave a mark. A mark. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, I know, and I know for sure that we've left some kind of mark with this expo, hobby. So that's yes. why I'm so thankful to have been through this journey with you for the first 10 years. It's been amazing. I know we've impacted so many people's lives. Uh, and you've introduced so much to me. I'm you know, thankful. Uh, I didn't want to forget to thank Rodi Montijo, though, for this year's poster, too. Yes. No, not an old friend of ours from the, yeah, thanks, Rico. Yeah, it's part of the poster. Wow, Rico, he fell back in his chair to share the poster, man. He, he it's, took a hit. It's Rody's signature style, signature look. We're so appreciative of his artwork and um, yeah, his design for this year's poster, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And the rumor is, well, it's not a rumor, but um, I guess we should be thankful to Mola, too, because uh, the rumor is that they are interested in having us back in 2022. Like you said, once everybody does their part, and hopefully we can meet again in person. Um, wow. The rumor is maybe late April, early May. Wow. You know, the world will, you know, get back together, hopefully, and we can uh, meet everybody up because uh, that was the only sad thing about this year is that we were we were dreaming that we could do an in-person show this year. And just the response from the compute from the community, our friends, artists, everybody was so happy at the thought of maybe being able, you know, to do an in-person show. But you know, with the statistics and everything, it just wasn't, you know, responsible. So, but maybe next April and May, if things turn out um, good, uh, you'll be able to see Javier Hernandez at Muerto's table. You know. That's a uh- that's news to me. See, see, guys, like audience, because I haven't been in the late, latest meetings, it's you guys. So I get to hear the news like a fan now because, oh, it's good. But yeah, thank you, Mola, for that. And let's hope, like I said, that it works out that way because it's not really up to us here or Mola. It's up to the mass community, the, the country. So let's let's move to the right direction. Come on, we're all tired of staying locked in the house. Yeah. Even and, us cartoonists. Exactly. <laughs> and then just for everybody out there to know, Mola Museum of Latin American Art is a great museum. Take your family, take your friends. They've been great to us. So hopefully we can work and make this happen for the fans and everybody and, and bring back the Latino Comics Expo in person. So so people wow. can see so people can see how the latest work. Yeah, it's it's awesome. a event. It's event like this. It's events like this that are able to showcase, uh, you know, uh, Latino Latino talent. But um, support your local museum, support Mola, and be a member. Join, join, and, and be, become a member. Absolutely. <laughs> they're they're having a 25th anniversary. Yeah, Congratulations to them. Felicidades. Absolutely. And then uh, there's information on the uh, on the chat. So. Cool. Yeah, I guess we'll open it up to any last questions out there. Yes, thank you guys. If you guys have any questions for Javier or the other panelists, please put them in the chat section or use the Q&A function at the bottom of your Zoom window. Remind oh, yeah. us, oh, go ahead. Just a reminder to everyone, this is Javier's last panel as, uh, as, as part of the Latino Comic Expo, so take advantage of this moment. Uh, there's there's a gentleman by the name of uh, Bobby Hernandez. He's he wants to know. <laughs> uh, you are the executive producer and uh, editor of what of, of what series or what, what's you know what what other credits are you uh, working on out there? Right now, um, I mean, I uh, the El Muerto second graphic novel. Uh, he caught me off guard. What else am I working on? When's uh, it coming out? When's it coming out? Uh, let's hope April or May, so it can debut at uh 
Latino Comics Expo 2022. See, now I have like a target date. Um, that's, that's always good. That's how I work a lot. Like I try to, I think a lot of artists like, okay, what's the big show I want to do next year? You yeah. Know, May, June, August. So, like, so then we target the book for that. So I'm no different in that regard. Um, but yeah, is there anything, Bobby, I, uh, I told you that I'm not thinking of right now that I'm also producing or... Well, on, on social media, you've announced that you're work, you're you're working on um, you're working with um, uh, Raph Navarro. You're with oh with yes, I'm, yes. So yeah, Raph Navarro, which you mentioned today, a great friend of the expo. He did one of our posters, I think number four. Um, yeah, he's got his 25th anniversary. Speaking of 25, of Sonambulo, his mass Mexican wrestler lucha noir comic. Um, so he's putting out a 25th anniversary book of the first series beautiful oh, it's a beautiful looking book everything i've seen and uh yeah i got to do a little editorial um uh, uh little editorial role in there very proud of that um i also wrote the forward for it so uh yeah look for that mr navarro he'll be announcing that um coming up pretty soon so yeah you know we're glad to have him part of our expo history and great friend of mine by the way Thank we you go. Javier. No, just uh, just thank you again, Javi, for everything. It's been it's been great, and you know, love you, brother. Thank you. Thank the your family. Your fa Rico's family's been involved also. His wife Rosa, his daughter Sophie's been actually come down to a lot of the live shows. She always sets up at the front LCX table, <laughs> taking you know, checking people in, and you know, helping us out. Um, yeah, it's a family affair. My sisters have helped out here in Long Beach at the shows, Olivia DiMelda. Um, like I said, you know, Bobby and I'm part of our family, we're all family here. So yeah, Let, yeah, let's hope for next year for Mola for um, you know, you know, an open country community again. Yes, and we'd like to invite Solimar to come out, come on in. Yeah, and, and the Mola for sure. So I just wanted to briefly jump in and say on behalf of MOLA, the rest of the team, even Gabby Martinez, who's no longer here um, with us at MOLA, but I'm sure that she's here with us. And she was such an important part of just making this happen last year um, and forever grateful for that connection when it was such a tough fall for everybody, right? Um, it's an honor to have to have worked with Javier Hernandez on the logistical creative side of the Latino Comics Expo. Looking forward to seeing this new output of creativity and that hopefully, yes, we'll see in April, May. Well, we'll definitely work towards making that work. And I'm excited to work with Bobby. He's been a great help putting together this weekend. So definitely all those logistical um, abilities that you just described. Looking forward to that. Welcome to the team um, again, officially. And just on behalf of MOLA, thank you to all three of you for being such cornerstones in this uh, expo, in this event. And that just makes the MOLA education program so much richer and diverse. So thank just, you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Gracias. Well, don't cry because I'm a crier too. No, no, no. Oh, We're not going to be Daniel Craig crying on the last day of filming. <laughs> there, there, there are parallels. Uh, Daniel Craig is leaving the band series. Uh, he's become one of the greats, and you, good sir, you are one of the greats in our community. Um, we uh, we wish you, I mean, we, we wish you the best. We're definitely going to stay in contact, but there is a, a changing of the guard. There is, uh, this is a moment in time that will not be uh, forgotten, um, and you are someone special that will always uh, have a great, great role, uh, not role, but um you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Wrong, no. <laughs> this this really is a pivotal moment because yeah, I mean, um, we mentioned Gabriela Martinez who worked at Mola for years. She's gone on to other things now. So me and her really, if you think of this whole group, me and her are leaving, and now it's going to be Ricardo and Bobby and Solimar, and we got to thank Arturo. I'm sure you guys Arturo pop in every every uh, panel to start it off and everything. Her Solimar's got a great team, so. I wish my best luck to Solimad, Mola, Rico, and Bobby. I wish you guys the best in the future. And like I said, I won't be far. I'm never far from a phone call or a text. But 
Don't offer uh, yourself. Nosotros, we, we do call and we do reach out. I'll take a call, but I'm not Ric Flair. I'm not coming back, everybody. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. Gracias, Dolly. Well, I'll let you guys just say your official goodbyes, but I just wanted to pop in and just officially recognize you and thank you on behalf of Mola and the entire team. Yes, I have an awesome team, and I'm so proud of the work they've done and that they will continue to do. So thank you so much for the support, Javier. We know we'll see you again. And Bobby and Ricardo, we'll keep talking. Take care. Thanks again, guys. You guys have been such a huge source of inspiration to people like me, for example, that grew up watching, you know, you know, comic book related TV shows that learn how to draw from comic books that grew up enjoying comics, but never actually got the chance to be exposed to Latino comics. I had no idea that this existed until the first Latino Comics Expo last year that I helped with. So I'm very grateful for you guys existing and I'm excited to what you guys will have in the future. Um, thanks again to everyone that showed up today. This program and all of the programs that we had over this weekend will be available on the MOLA YouTube channel, as well as last year's content for some limited time. Thank you again, everyone. Uh, see you soon. Hopefully see you guys in next year on site. Hopefully. Ready? Yes. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Thanks Arturo. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. Uh